Closed or open ankle glaucoma? Do you know the difference? Hi, I'm Dr. Saya Nagori. I'm a board certified ophthalmologist and a glaucoma specialist, and you're watching the ifacts.com channel. Today, I wanna to educate you on how closed angle glaucoma or angle closure glaucoma is different from open angle glaucoma. Another name for open angle glaucoma is primary open angle glaucoma, and it's often abbreviated as POAG or POAG. It's also important to know that some patients can even have both types of glaucoma, and we'll get into that a little bit later. So first, let's talk about the angle of the eye. What is it and why does it matter? The angle of the eye is where the cornea, which is the clear part of the eye on the front of the eye, meets the iris, which is the colored part of the eye. This angle is crucial for the eye's drainage system, which regulates the intraocular pressure or eye pressure by allowing the aqueous humor to flow out of the eye. Now in some patients, their anatomy is just that their angle is narrow, so it is not as open as in other patients. Now when a patient has a anatomically narrow angle, it does not necessarily mean that they're going to have an attack of acute angle closure glaucoma, but it certainly does mean that they're at increased risk for it when compared to someone who has an open angle. Now as the name suggests, in open angle glaucoma, the angle is not narrow. This is actually the most common form of glaucoma. We treat open angle glaucoma by lowering the eye pressure. In open angle glaucoma, there is a structure called the trabecular meshwork, and this is part of the drainage system of the eye. And it is in this part of the drainage system where we see a lot of the resistance to outflow of the aqueous humor. This is then what causes high pressures in the eye. It's important to also know that we as doctors don't know everything there is to know about how glaucoma really happens. What we do know is that there's a common pathway for treating glaucoma, which is to lower the eye pressure. So there is actually an entity called normotensive glaucoma where the eye pressure really isn't that high when we measure it on multiple occasions for these patients, but these patients still need pressure lowering treatment to treat their glaucoma. So now let's get back to POAG and open angle glaucoma. So in this type of glaucoma, and this is very different from narrow angle glaucoma or angle closure glaucoma, in open angle glaucoma, it is very slowly progressive and oftentimes patients have no symptoms at all. It's actually why open angle glaucoma is often referred to as the silent thief of vision because patients don't even know that they have it in those early stages. Now, angle closure glaucoma, if a person with an anatomically narrow angle then gets an attack of angle closure glaucoma, this is quite the opposite. These patients are often very symptomatic and they have many symptoms, including eye pain, blurry vision, and they often have to seek medical care emergently. So what would trigger an attack of acute angle closure glaucoma? An angle closure glaucoma attack occurs when the iris moves forward and it actually obstructs the drainage angle. And this can be triggered by a variety of different things. There is something that's called pupillary block, and this happens when the flow of aqueous humor is restricted as the pupil dilates. So your pupil may dilate and you could be thrown into an attack of angle closure glaucoma when you're going from a dark room to a light room or a lighted room to a dark room and this may cause the pupil to dilate or if the pupil is changing sizes this could certainly trigger an attack certain medications like anticholinergics as well as antihistamines can also trigger an attack of angle closure glaucoma it's not extremely common but it is possible so aging can also contribute to narrowing of the angle of the eye so as we age the cataract in our eye will start to develop and this is a normal aging change of the lens but as the cataract grows it does take up more space in the eye and if the cataract narrows the angle of the eye it you can develop another type of glaucoma which is called phacomorphic glaucoma so unlike in open angle glaucoma in closed angle glaucoma it happens very suddenly and the patients usually have intense pain eye redness they can also have blurred vision halos around lights headaches, nausea, vomiting, and while open angle glaucoma definitely needs to be treated, it's not an emergency like narrow angle closure glaucoma is. So if you experience any of these symptoms and you're not sure if you're predisposed to having a narrow angle, but you're having really extreme eye pain, eye redness, or blurred vision, it's important to get medical care right away. Now there's also an entity called chronic angle closure. In chronic angle closure, patients have gradual and progressive vision loss that can develop from months to years. They may have a little bit of eye discomfort or eye pain that's subtle intermittently, but it's not 
quite the type of pain that's experienced when you have an attack of narrow angle. Chronic angle closure glaucoma can happen over time because there's scarring and adhesions that happen in the drainage system and eye doctors call these synechiae and this can cause the angle to narrow and it can worsen the blockage. It can also then lead to high eye pressure. Now, can patients have multiple types of glaucoma? Yes, it is possible to have an anatomically narrow angle and also have features of primary open angle glaucoma. And sometimes we call this mixed mechanism glaucoma. So how will you know if you have one of these types of glaucoma or if you are predisposed to having a narrow angle attack? So the diagnosis of glaucoma or being a glaucoma suspect or having an anatomic narrow angle really requires you to go into the eye doctor, have a full eye exam with a look at the optic nerve, a look at your angle, a look in the slit lamp, as well as maybe doing some baseline glaucoma testing if it's required. Because all types of glaucoma can cause irreversible vision loss, it's really important to get a screening eye exam from your eye doctor. Hope you found this helpful. Remember to hit the like button below and I'll see you next time.